flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football sports betting and NASCAR home. I am your host, Kyle Robert. With me to break down all that was the Bristol Night Race, recap our DraftKings, recap our betting card, and get you set to attack the Echo Park, Texas uh, shenanigans, uh, Texas Motor Speedway. It's Brian Twining. What's up, Brian? What's up, Kyle? First of all, it's the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500. Sure. No, yeah, I, li- I didn't like seven more words for right. Uh, you know, all I got to say is way to F and go Chris Busher. The one week that I don't want to put him to the card. Um, even after talking up Fords all week about how strong they looked, uh, Chris Busher takes home the dub. Um, it was super exciting to see him get to do that. I was having to monitor the race on my phone, going to a, a local soccer game. So that kind of sucked, but it was fantastic getting updates from you, Kyle. And then, um, tweets from like Bob Pockress and all like all those people updating the race that Chris freaking Busher won yeah. the, the race. Like that was great. Yeah. I was trying to keep you, uh, keep you in the loop as uh, I was watching most of the race. I, it worked out amazing. I had Ohio state on the big screen. I had the NASCAR race on the small screen. I was able to watch them both. Um, it was, it was a great time. The race was fun. Uh, Bristol under the lights is always a good time. And, um, I w- I will say when I got your text about Blaney losing a tire, I almost turned my phone off at that point. Just like yep. it. yeah, he's running well too. Death taxes and Ryan yep. Blaney in the pits, um, just not great. There was some definitely some issues, definitely some some nonsense. And then our guy Christopher Busher pulls it out, wins the race, um, and. Uh, Nineteen different drivers have won a race this season, which is wild, incredible. And we still the, uh, have some pretty big names who haven't taken home yep. a win yet either. Clearly, the new car is uh, paying dividends, and NASCAR is getting exactly what they want. So yep. um, it's made a fun season. It's opened things up, and um, you know you don't really have like last year where Kyle Larson's just win, 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 win. Um, it's a yeah. very, very uh, different. Um, view on the season and I think it's been a nice little back and forth obviously we all love dominance we've you know the Bulls the the Warriors the Yankees um, Patriots Patriots well I mean, Tom Brady I guess you could say after seeing yeah the last so couple years, but... know, at some point it does get old but for the most part people love uh, dominance anyways <laughs> let's recap DraftKings let's look at how the betting card went and then more importantly get some people some numbers for it this week so we had three lineups brian or i had three lineups we put one together on the show as we always do um mixed bag of results here larson and byron were great uh joey logano was not and obviously you know crashing did not help um but never really felt like he was dominant like i thought like we thought he might be um just I just want to say, looking ju- just looking at this real quick, seeing that Byron was only rostered in eleven and a half percent of lineups is kind of baffling to me with how well he's looked um, in the playoffs, how he looked going into that race. I mean, he's somebody to watch out for in the championship uh, run coming up. Here. Yeah, it was. It's pretty, imp- pretty, uh, pretty good leverage on the field if Cindric had been a little bit better, and then obviously yeah. Logano was a little chalky. Maybe we do better, but. Um, you know, it, I, I think we had some of the right ideas. It just didn't, weren't able to put it all hey, together. Michael McDowell, 11th. Yeah, Michael McDowell I w- would have been nice if he got 10th instead of 11th, but, you know. <laughs> You're right. Um, you know, we could talk about that when we flip over and look at the betting card. I did two other lineups. Uh, similar vibes. Did Hamlin, Alex Bowman. Um, you know, his card, just, uh, he's having Alex Bowman weeks. You know, put a couple weeks together and then a couple terrible weeks. Um, just, just this is not, not it. But I did manage to squeeze a lineup in with Christopher Busher, who was clearly the guy you needed if you wanted to have a monster yep. week. One hundred and thirty-three point seven points over on DraftKings. McDowell was fine. Byron was great. Uh, Larson was great. Truex stunk it up because you know accidents He's and Truex. whatnot. 
Um, so, you know, mixed bag results, obviously wish I would have done better. Um, got some of the pieces, just couldn't put it all together with the puzzle. Uh, as we flip over and look at our betting card from the week, um, I mean, I thought Byron had a chance for a while. Um, thought he was going to cash some big numbers for me. Did not get there, obviously. Uh, Truex at 16. I actually live bet him, I think, at 25, and then he proceeded Ooh. to crash. Um, <laughs> and that was really fun. Um, Cindric Logano, obviously. Yeah. A bunch of a bunch of red numbers. Eric Jones, not so much. Almarola, not so much. Um, starting first, not even finishing in the top 10 was was painful. Um, Bowman over Bubba didn't get there. Chastain over Reddick was one of my better ones. Chastain over Logano. Uh, William Byron did get the top five, which was one of my best bets. Uh, William Byron did get the top 10, which was a good, which I was happy. And then Cole Custer coming through with that plus 950. Um, had a solid, solid week, obviously qualified well. Um, and you know, came through. Um, and then I thought Larson over Elliott would be the play. But Elliott was actually, I think, the guy we should have gone to on DraftKings. He was probably really popular, but he ended up paying it off and finished in the top three and um, was not somebody that we ended up making it to, but uh, probably should have with you know, hindsight being what it is. Um, you also went heavy on the outrights. Byron, Logano, Blaney, Hamlin. Uh, negative, 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 and negative Ghost Rider. Eric Jones, not so much. Eric jo Daniel Suarez, not so much. Alex Bowman, not so much. Uh, your best bet, Blaney over Reddick, not so much. Chastain over Reddick ended up coming through, and then obviously having the big bet on will he be the top 10 um, ended up helping out to salvage your week. So yeah, and um, that this will probably be, or that will probably be the last race we get that kind of top ten value on Byron mm -hmm. as the books kind of adjust to. Oh crap! This guy's actually really good. That that string of non top tens was yep. an anomaly. Yep, and that's very bright, very William Byron. He's either going to be like third or like 33rd. There's, you know, not a lot in between for him. So, yep. Uh, despite having a very similar card, you're up 200 uh, bucks or 20 units. I'm down 15 units. But uh, making a comeback, know. though. Making a comeback. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I like to uh, ride the roller coaster of emotions. I'm very William Byron in my betting cards ups and downs and ups mm -hmm. and downs. And, uh, yeah, so let's flip over. Let's look at the odds and let's see if we can't find some winners this week. Uh, we have Denny Hamlin as your favorite, six, six and a half, five and a half at Caesars, uh, five and a half at DraftKings. Right behind him, Kyle Larson. Obviously, we're going mile and a half, uh, very similar to Vegas, similar to Kansas. Um, things to think and about. Charlotte, I believe, and Charlotte, uh, according to our there. guy, I fantasy race, by the way, who, uh, rarely ever points us in the wrong or right the right yes. uh, the wrong direction that's the word i'm looking for uh christopher bell aggressively priced up this week and yeah probably hey, for a good reason rightfully so he's looked fantastic yeah yeah he's he's definitely taken strides uh behind him chase elliott who ended up running a really good race despite poor qualifying um, I, I guess I'll cut it off there as it as kind of the 10 inside 10 to one range. Are you interested in any of these names as outrights this week? Well, I think the first guy on the board that really is piquing my interest right now and somebody I'm, I'm actually adding to the card for a full unit is that's going to be Kyle Larson at seven to one over at BetMGM. I know he hasn't been the guy that we saw last year, but I mean, when you look at what he did at this track last year, he was pretty good during the all-star race this season before wrecking really early. Yeah, I think he had like the second fastest green flag speed uh, during the first 34 or 35 laps he was able to run. Yep. And then just knowing that he's actually getting better and improving uh, in the playoffs, like each week he's having a little bit of a better drive. He finished fifth at Bristol this last weekend. So I think Larson is on like, he's on it. A win is on the cusp for this guy. Like he, he's too good of a driver to go th this long without competing for for a victory during a race. And I think it might come. It could come this weekend. Yeah. No. I think that's. I think that's very fair. Um, obviously, had a second at Vegas, a second in Kansas, um, a top ten at Kansas in the second race. 
And he finished, uh, I think the most telling one was at Charlotte earlier this year where he finished ninth. He started at the rear of the field at, uh, for that race. So, I mean, it just shows you like how good he does run at these one and a halves, which I mean, it was evidence last year where he just absolutely dominated the field. I mean, just for quick reference, he led over 75% of all the laps during this exact race last season. So, I mean, he clearly has a good understanding of how to race at this track. 100%. Hundred um, percent. I do worry a little bit just because that was those were all like kind of March through May races, and um, mm. he kind of yeah, fell true, off a little true. bit, but seems to be regaining his form. So I, I think it's a fine number and uh, one I'd be willing to jump in, especially if I can get that seven. I think um, yes, I don't love it as much at six, but that's well. And then real quick too, like we saw it last week. Hamlin opened as the favorite by the time green flag was about to drop. Larson was the favorite at like four and mm-hmm. a half, five to one. So I mean, yep. it, it, this, the same thing is probably going to happen. Yeah. If you really like any of these guys, the odds of them getting longer at this point is pretty uh, non-existent. Yeah. Um, even if they don't qualify well, they'll pretty much be within the same range of outcomes. Um, but if you really like any of these guys, Hamlin, Larson, um, even you know Chase Elliott, I would be betting them now because the odds of them, if they qualify better, um, are going to be as you said, between you know four and a half and five and a half to one. Um, and you're going to be missing out on some numbers. Uh, the next chunk of drivers is really interesting. I think Ross Chastain. It's been a rough uh, mm-hmm. run of late, but you know this is a th- these are tracks where. Suarez and he both did really well and have shown the ability this season. Um, obviously priced up for a reason right behind him, Ryan Blaney, who, if he can keep all tires on the car, might actually have a chance <laughs> to win the race. Will be without his crew chief and one. I was, member. I think that's an extremely important uh, yeah. information to kind of factor into this weekend. I mean, he's without his crew chief. I think they lost two pit crew members. On a pit crew that already was not performing at a top level. Yeah. So, like, what are we going to get out of this team going forward is definitely kind of scary if, you, if you're holding a Ryan Blaney championship future, which we are. Um, yeah. So, like, I, I don't know what to do with him. I like him in the race, but that, that may be a huge factor when it comes to Sunday. Yep. Yep. Especially if it's, you know, he's battling a few guys and that one late pit stop is crucial. We saw last year how important it is. And, you know, Kyle Larson gets the right pit stop, uh, wins the race, wins the championship. And if you don't get that good pit stop and you have issues in the pits, uh, you're just, it's just not going to get you there. Uh, Kyle Busch uh, is actually pretty all over the map. You can get him as low as seven and a half to one, as high as 10 to one. Um, you know, if you really like Kyle Bush, clearly you need to shop it. But um, Brian, are you into Kyle Bush at any of these numbers? Honestly, I I don't know what to do with Bush going forward. Like it was something I was going to ask your opinion on. But for me, seeing as a seeing as he's eliminated from playoff contention, he's basically already has one foot out the door of JGR. Like, yeah. what are we, what kind of racing are we going to get? It's it's a there's a few like him. Tyler Reddick, like there's the, with a lot of the late, um, you know, motive, uh, motivation combined with, you know, being eliminated from the playoffs yeah. combined with, you know, being rotated out of cars. Like it's, it's a weird situation for a handful of drivers. I think Kyle Bush is good enough uh, that it won't really matter. Um, and if you, you know, obviously if you can get him at 10 to one, I'd be fine with it. Um but I'm there's no way I'm betting like seven or say even eight and a half to one. I'd rather much rather go get Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, or even Christopher Bell at those prices. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, no, I I I agree with that sentiment, and even more so that, uh, with Reddick under in that same breath. Yeah. Like he's a guy who, yeah, he kind of spurned Richard Childress Racing by not telling him he was leaving, but then they totally gave him the backhanded slap by kicking him out of his own car a year yeah. early like <laughs> pretty wild stuff uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean professional I, integrity will probably definitely take over but at the same time why is reddit going to push to gain or win money for a team that's literally like fine get the hell out of our yeah, our office it's a, it's a real shame netflix isn't doing a uh, nascar documentary like they do for f1 because um, the drama behind the scenes would be really, really entertaining. Uh, your guy, William Byron, 12 to one this week, I think 
priced very uh, favorably, I think is an already added on the card. I think it makes sense um, based on where he he is priced. And I think the next guy we really need to dive into is Bubba Wallace. We talked about this car at Kansas. Obviously, Bubba won the last Kansas race driving the 45, uh, the race that Kurt Busch won. Um, you know, you can get him at 20 to one to win this race. Um, I, I'm, it's going to take a lot for me to not get there. Yeah. I, the one, the one caveat about Bubba is, yeah, he's looked better of late. Uh, he's definitely proving his prowess amongst the rest of the drivers, but he absolutely, I mean, there's no better way to put it than he sucks at Texas. His best finish is 14th. It's his only finish inside the top 20 over the last six races yeah. here. I mean, he does not have a good uh, history of success at Texas Motor Speedway. So getting there at 20 to one, uh, it, I don't even know if that's good enough for me uh, outside of like a very like a quarter unit or a half a unit, just kind of dart throw. Yeah, I just it's so different with the new car. And I think he's evolved as a driver over the course yeah. of the season. So I'm willing to kind of forget some of that. Also at Charlotte, qualified seventh, was running in fifth before he had an issue uh, later in the race. So I'm, you know, probably finishes much better. Obviously the, the runs at Kansas um, and then, you know, at uh, Vegas, um, he, he was fine. He was 10th after stage two, but ended up finishing 25th. So not, I think not... it's interesting, interesting too. I think these 20 to one numbers, I think that's kind of the spot where sports books are kind of just like, well, I mean, I guess they have a shot, but we don't really mm. know like how legit of a shot it is. I feel like the guys in this kind of 18 to 22 range are, accordingly priced i think they have the upside to win in a race i think they're compelling enough that if they won like or if you like if you see that number you jump on it but the books are also like you know we don't really expect them to win so we're happy to take your money and then the one time <laughs> that it really happens exactly uh, we'll, we're, we're okay happy to pay it out. out well i think on that note like who who would you rather place an outright on if you can only place an outright on one guy of the four guys that we could see on the screen right now? Harvick, Logano, Bowman, or Wallace? Probably Bubba. Really? I think so. Wild to say, I never thought I never thought I would be saying that um, based on kind of expectations. Obviously, Bowman won in Vegas, so Bowman's interesting. Um, but he's like feast or famine. <laughs> right. I mean, but if you're betting an outright ticket, he's one of the ones that make the most yeah. sense. Also and had two, was at, at DK's 25 to one. Yep. And he was third in Kansas on, on in September. Um, you know what? Anyway, <laughs> Alex Bowman. Welcome to the betting card. Uh, I love, uh, that's when, all you, it takes I love when you get so. me into these things. You, you, you know how to drive me. You, you know, right through, and here we go, Alex Bowman. Uh, um, but I yeah, knew... like it, I love Bubba, and you guys have seen it multiple times. Like it's literally the only piece of, uh, well, I can't say that because we did the Halloween stuff, but the the first and only legit piece of NASCAR apparel I own is a twenty three eleven hat that I bought when that yeah. team was created when Bubba Wallace signed on there. So I'm a big Wallace fan, but I don't know if twenty to one is a good enough number for me to get on, even with him. Just he hasn't been good at this track. He's been better during this season. But I mean, the wins just aren't consistent enough for me to get to this number. I would prefer a driver matchup or yeah. even taking a, a lesser value on a top 10. I think that makes sense. Uh, beyond there, we have uh, Suarez at 28, 30. Um, you know, Cindric, Chase Briscoe, Eric Jones, like we start getting into real long shots. Yeah. Anybody in this range or below that you want to make sure we hit on? Well, I mean, Eric Jones, he's, we, we always kind of gravitate to him when it comes to these kinds of tracks, you know, the kind of the faster paced uh, one and a halves. He, I mean, a hundred to one, that's a ridiculous number for somebody yeah, who he's... has ran really well at Texas uh, in the past when he was with JGR, I think his first, three races there or first 
it was like three of his five races were fourth place finishes with JGR. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it in the right equipment, he's really good. I mean, that doesn't necessarily dictate a, a possible victory again. Probably right. top ten or driver. He matchup, should but... probably be priced at like forty five to sixty five. Exactly, getting a hundred. hundred to one is just ridiculous. Um, I don't feel quite as good as the with the sixties. The seventies are fine, um, and if he qualifies well, obviously those will end up at forty, thirty five. You know, kind of well, in this range. I think too for for good perfect example was last week with Chris Busher. What, what were his opening odds? Probably like eighty to one to win that race. I mean. Yep. Clearly. I know I saw some screenshots on Twitter of 60, 80. I think someone had a 125 to one on him. Like those are, those are nice paydays. And obviously those happen from time to time, but more often than not, we end up kind of in, in yeah, this range. Kind of so um, I've added two outrights. I have Alex Bowman at 25. I have Bubba at 20. I will probably add Larson, Hamlin, Maybe Ross, maybe Kyle Bush. I, I, don't, I, don't I, I mean, I, I'll be on record of saying um, I, I do still think that Ryan Blaney has a shot to win this yeah. race. But oh, for sure. with the issues in the with the pit crew, it uh, I cannot, you know, bet him with my money just knowing that there is definitely a disadvantage going into this Sunday. Well, we can't bet all the favorites, right? So we have to find reasons to kind of fade one guy or fade another, and um, that. But that's just enough for me to consider. Maybe, maybe I want to go to a ten to one Kyle Busch instead of eleven to one Ryan Blaney, or go up to my William Byron at twelve to one, like you are. I think yeah, he's another guy uh, that Martin could, Truex Jr. again. That could, or you know, just burn my money and bet Martin Truex Jr. Um, <laughs> So, so, so uh, that's kind of where how my brain works at the top of the board. Uh, let's look at the top 10 market, and then we can hit some uh, matchups, see if we can find value there, um, and then we will find a best bet. Uh, so let's keep it rolling. Let's see if we can't find some decent numbers. Obviously, these long numbers are just, just ain't it for us. Uh, Bubba, minus 135 to top 10. Um how, is that is that a good enough like do we feel like that's a solid enough number you know i'm obviously betting him to win the race so i think a top 10 is pretty good but should i be a little more patient on that or do you think minus 135 makes some sense uh, you know it i think it honestly for him it, bubba has not been the greatest qualifier this season yeah. and i think there's a good shot that he qualifies in the mid-teens maybe like lower teens closer to 20th and then that number is probably going to go above even money and i feel like for somebody like him it's waiting till after qualifying to yeah. see if he has the qualifying speed and then coming back to it at still minus 160 or minus 170 which i would much rather pay up for evidence that he's going to look good than yeah. pay up early and then wind up having a shitty car. No, that makes sense. And I think I'll look at, you know, I got to rather look at like a top five market, especially since I have the outright and see if I can get a better number there too. So yeah. I think I'll avoid that. Alex Bowman minus 105 to top 10 is going on the card. I'm not doing um, it again. Because I am a glutton for punishment, Brian Twining. Well, this is this is now three weeks in a row that one or both of us has been on Bowman, and like I said, he is. How have the last three Canada. weeks gone for us, Brian? <laughs> they have gone poorly. <laughs> so uh, maybe, maybe there we figured out what we need to uh, not be doing each week. Yeah, and real quick, just to, just to go back to the top of the board, I just want people to recognize the fact that Christopher Busher, I mean Christopher Bell, is now. The third lowest odds to top 10 at pretty much every single sports yeah. book. After all season, we kept talking about this guy's numbers are so mispriced. We were getting him at like one of minus 105, minus yeah, 110. plus 120. Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Uh, Daniel Suarez at, at even money, I think, is a fine bet at plus 100. Like you um, said, though, Trackhouse has not looked great. No, no, they've definitely, as the season's gone along, they have not been the dominant force that uh, we saw early in the year. So, yeah, I am going to add the Air Jones 3-1 to one top 10. I, like I think that 
that's that's kind of the number that's a little bit safer with him. Although he's the same way. He's like either a top five or he's crashing out halfway through the race. Yeah. Uh, any interest in Chris Busher at plus 350? <sighs> I mean, he he showed it last week by winning the race. But like, again, if, if he comes out and qualifies like crap, then you're going to get a way better number with yeah. still the possibility he could crack the top 10. Yeah, I mean, he got a he started tenth at Kansas, he, and didn't and finished sixteenth. His best finish at Texas, by the way, is fifteenth over the last ten ten trips here. So yeah, this was even after starting the race tenth last it's not year. Done it well at, at this style of track, so I think I think I'm good. McDowell at seven to one. I mean, he's getting close every week. He's close. Yeah. I just think there's there's a few of those kind of guys that are just flirting with um, numbers that make sense. Let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm all set. I'm not I'm not gonna mm-hmm. dive in. As the week goes along, maybe I'll find some yeah exactly some more information more and add. feel better about it. But you know, as we sit here today on Wednesday. Um, none of these numbers are, are compelling enough to smash. Let's go to the head to head market. Let's see if we can't find some numbers we like. Um, man, they really like Chase Elliott minus 170. That's interesting head to head. Uh, Logano versus Harvick. Uh, Bubba plus 105 versus Joey Logano. Give me that candy, baby. Ooh, really? Yeah. Wow, now you're in the fade Logano. Well, it's just plus money on a guy that I think can legitimately win the race. Maybe he'll end yeah. up finishing, you know, 17th, and I'll regret adding that. But, uh, yeah. And then Kyle Larson, plus 100 over Denny. I do like that that quite a bit. Just, I mean, even money on a driver that I think is just as good, I think can easily win the race. and. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add that one too, just because, like you said, like the we could do money Christopher matter. Bell too at plus one hundred five over Denny, um, and just fade Denny. It's, it's I'm gonna do fade it. Fade Denny uh, week. It is fade Denny week, and no one saw that coming. I think, and I'm, you know what that means? Denny's gonna win the race. Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott, William Byron, Ryan Blaney. Oh, Chris. Yeah, the Chris Busher Busher number on Blaney is uh, this is basically only going to be added simply because of the number. We're getting almost three to one on against a driver that has issues keeping his car on the track and wheels on the car. Um, I will take that. I know Busher has doesn't have a great success here and the top 10 numbers didn't really make sense. But if I can get plus 270 just to win the head to head. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the number I can get on. So, and all it all it literally takes is Blaney to have another mistake, go a lap down or something, and that's. Yep. Uh, it apparently is head to head week as William Byron is plus one hundred over Martin Truex. So I I you you folks didn't see it, but I had three bets already on my card prior to starting recording, and that was actually the first one that I added. Uh, Byron at the moment is. 1 million times better on track on Sundays or Saturday nights as it was last weekend than Martin Truex Jr. So that, that number makes no sense to me. Uh, I'm also going to add Chastain over Truex so I can just fade oh, Truex no. and Denny. Oh, it's fade JGR apparently. Or oh, fade apparently. the old guys with JGR. Um, and that is the end of the head to heads. Any other numbers you want to look at, Brian, or should we go review our card, give the people a best bet, and get the hell out of here? Oh, well, I'm gonna check on the. Uh, oh, let's like look at um, top Chevy, top four, that stuff. Yeah, and the and the qualifying specials. I I like oh, looking that's at those. Fun too. Oh, oh, did one thing that I didn't notice. Like, did we bet Ford to win the race? last week did you did you bet that did we add that to the card we didn't we didn't officially add it i don't believe and we talked about it they were they were the short they were the longest odds we talked about it being the best number and why would it make sense and oh my god that's such a good value and then what did we need to do 
absolutely nothing about it because you know that <laughs> that would make sense why why would yeah. we bet the stuff we really like yeah exactly um here is your odds to win the poll um that one bear with mm -hmm. me I'm producing my own show over here uh all right we have hamlin and larson bush bell christopher bell eight to one any interest dangerous don't no, no, no. Ryan blady nine to one I like the Blaney number, which I, I mean, he does have a pole here at Texas. Bubba fitting, fitting to one Bubba. No. Alex Bowman at 20. Chris Busher at 40. I, I don't see Busher having the, I don't see any numbers the, that I the hot lap speed. Uh, let's go reconstructor. Ford at four to one. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a big number. Yeah, that 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 says we don't trust Ford this week. So I was just gonna say because when you a, really factor it in there, the only legit guys for Ford that they think have a shot are Blaney and Logano. Yeah, and I guess Harvick to a certain extent. And mind you, Kevin Harvick um, has the has three wins at Texas, I think, over the last like six six races or something. But that was all prior to last year and the year before, or and this year. So. Yeah, we do, we've only seen Harvick. Yeah, he's won twice, but those were kind of weird, weird instances, I guess. And he's D he DNF'd in three in what was it in all three? No, the first two playoff races and, and like actually three in a row before last weekend. I. It's pretty wild how many rides Ford has versus Toyota, yet Toyota is smashing them and yeah. potential winners. Because if you go to Toyota, you have Hamlin, Bell, Bush, Truex, Bubba at nine to one. Bubba at nine to one as top Toyota is kind of fun. Yeah. No, nah, I don't like it. I, I, I like I that you don't like it. That makes me feel better. Yeah, that that one's a little bit worrisome. We got me. Michael McDowell at fifty-five to one to top Ford. Now, honestly, that that to me is a better value bet because Blaney, Logano, Harvick. Cindric Busher, Keslowski, Almirola, and Briscoe have all had instances this year where they've had issues, yeah. either contact, pit, pit problems. Like, you know, it McDowell has been pretty consistently running near the top 10. And if he could somehow sneak in there and the rest of the Fords have all the just bunch of shit happen, like at 55 to one, that's a, that's a good bet. Yeah. Yeah. If you like McDowell at all this week, I think that's the number. Um, and then you could back I'm, it up with the top 10 if you want. I'm going to add that right there. I'm going to add that Do William it. Byron top Chevy at 550. Oh. I thought you were going to add McDell. I was going to be excited, but now I'm not. But the Christopher Bell? What? You you're talking about I was going to add the McDowell? I thought you were going to add the McDowell. Then I was going to be like, let's go. But Well, if I did that, it would be for like a, a fifth of a unit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. That's what we're here for. All right, let's re let's recap. Let's update. Let's give people best bet and let's get the hell out of here. So two up two outrights, Alex Bowman at 25, Bubba at 20. Uh, I want to add one more, but I'm going to cut it off at three. Um, it'll probably be either Larson or William Byron or maybe Kyle Busch. Um, and then I have Alex Bowman top 10 at minus 105. And then I went heavy on the head to head. So Bubba over Logano plus 105. Larson over Denny at plus 100. Bell over Denny at plus 105. Uh, Christopher Busher over Ryan Blaney at plus 270, just because that ridiculous. almost three to one on a head to head, I will gladly take. Um, I'm actually going to make this half a unit. Uh, Byron over Truex at plus 100. And Chastain over Truex at minus 110. Uh, Brian has Larson and Byron on the outright card. Brian, are you considering any other head to, or potential outrights this week, or is that going to be it for you? I think for the time being, until I get to see practice and qualifying, like I'll probably add another post yeah. qualifying. Like I think somebody I'm really keeping an eye on is um, how Kevin Harvick looks because mm -hmm. I mean he went in the Bristol looking great. Yeah. So it, I think he's some. Well, 
you know, he, he might be somebody I add towards the end of the week now that I'm I'm talking myself into this. Because if he qualifies yeah. good, that number is going to plummet. Right. Or we get somebody like Chase Elliott from last week where he qualifies really well. And then we consider adding him at, you know, double the odds. So that could yeah. be another way to take it. Um, head-to-head market. He has Byron over Truex. He has Larson over Hamlin. Busher over Blaney. Um, he also added the Eric Jones top 10 at 3-1. to one. And Byron as your top Chevy at 550 to one. Brian Twining, give the people a best bet as we sit here today on Wednesday for the Auto Trader Echo Park Automotive 500, <laughs> Margaritaville, Dosa uh, Keys. Angle of Pursuit uh, race. One yeah, this one was we'll super easy for me. <laughs> as soon as I saw it, there was, there was no doubt in my mind I was going to go here. But Byron over Truex is yeah. going to be my best bet for the midweek card. And I'm going again, I'm getting really, really frisky here. Five units. Feisty. Byron has been way better than party Marty. Feisty. I lo- that was going to be my best bet. I'm not going to do it. Cause I don't want to murder your, um, your card. <sighs> because no. I hate myself. I'm going to go Alec <laughs> Bowman to top 10 at minus one Oh five. I think that's a really good number. I think he qualifies well. Maybe not on the poll, but like third or fourth. And I think that number is like minus 135 to minus 165 when we sit here and talk on Saturday. Uh, as we do have a Sunday race this week, uh, Brian and I will be back in your feed Sunday morning. We'll talk Saturday night with qualifying and everything in the books. Uh, we will be back to update your betting cards. We'll uh, be back to uh, give you some DraftKings thoughts. If you are enjoying the show, please make sure you're hitting the thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed to the video. If you've made it this far, it means you're liking some of what we're doing. Um, join us on Sunday morning and uh, tell a friend if they like NASCAR. Uh, we only have a few more races to uh, enjoy, to bet, to have fun. That is Brian Twining. I am Kyle Robert. You guys enjoy the rest of your week and uh, we'll talk to you next time. 